What up? It's your boy, The Incredible Man, and yes, I'm back at it again, and we're finally, finally back, man. It's been a minute, but yes, it is here, Crisis on Infinite Earths, part four, man, and it was good. I really, really enjoyed it, and there was a bunch of scenes that, let's be real, they panned it to the audience for sure, man. I mean, they gave us a bunch of stuff that I didn't even know that I wanted, and stuff that I didn't even know that I needed, but it was nice to have, and this episode... It was okay, but it was, to me, like, they felt like they really weren't trying to really develop the story that much to me. Like, it felt like the story was second place, and they were just trying to fix all of this stuff and set for Oliver. Because if we're talking about Oliver, this was a nice episode for Oliver. We got to see him be the almighty specter and, and show off his moves and powers and everything. And we got to see him sacrifice himself again, but this time it was different. You know what I'm saying? He was Specter. I kind of wish they went would have went like a full Specter, but at the same time, I understand he had to still be Oliver Queen and he had to be Specter. So they made a nice comparison to making him Oliver Queen and Specter. And I thought it was absolutely wonderful. I really, really enjoyed this episode. And um. Like I said, all of the pandering stuff that they gave, I'm okay with it. I freaking loved it, man. I love that they gave us this was this was this was wonderful. They gave us Ezra Miller as Flash on the TV. Come on, man. Tell me that was not cool. That is one of the coolest parts that we saw this episode and even in the whole crossover. A lot of people may not like it, but I mean let's be real. Excuse me. It was wonderful, and it was nice to see and him and Barry, well, both Barrys going back and forth. Um, well, Ezra and Grant, both Barrys, uh, them going back and forth, and like, no, 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 I'm the Flash, and then and and then um, Ezra was like the Flash. Wow, that's that's cool. He was like, look at your suit. It's like it looks all comfy and and, and breathable. And then and and Grant was like, look at your suit. It looks safe. It looks like you don't like you don't take that much damage just like when you get hit. So it was nice to have that whole comparison with them seeing two different alternate versions of The Flash because that's something that The Flash does very well on the CW. We always see these different versions of him. I kind of wish we get this. We we, we could have seen The Accelerated Man. I want The Accelerated Man Flash. That is The Flash that I want, but we're, we're not getting him. Maybe we'll get him sooner or later. But, um... Yeah, like I said, this whole episode was good. We um, had some moments with Ryan Choi where, you know, he started narrating part of, part of the show and talking about all of the Paragons with them being there trapped in the um, temporal zone and, you know, him narrating, like, what they're going through and everything and how they're all kind of struggling just being there. And we also saw, and this is one of my favorite parts of the episode, Lex Luthor. A lot of people may point out different other aspects of this episode that they really, really enjoyed. But I enjoy Lex Luthor. If I'm being 100%, this episode for me was absolutely wonderful and Lex made it better than what it what it was what it was already doing. Lex made it completely better with the the little subtle hints of, of, of sarcasm and, and the tad bits of of comedy that he brought to the thing and um finding out that he you know he wrote himself powers with, with the piece of paper of the book of destiny so just seeing every time john crier was on screen as lex luther it was absolutely wonderful seeing them on the alien planet seeing him talking to marnovu about um no no you don't want to do this and so it was nice seeing john crier and let's be real he plays lex to perfection man i really enjoy his version of lex because he comes in with the comedy and the sarcasm but he's dead serious about it he's it's not jokes to him he's like completely serious about it so he is one of the aspects that i really enjoyed about this show now this episode itself saw the whole the whole group as a whole, all of the Paragons, trying, they entered the Speed Force thanks to Oliver slash Spectre untapping all of Barry's potential and allowing him to enter into Speed zone, speed Force. He couldn't enter into the Speed Force. He tried, then he kind of got trapped in there a little bit. So it was a whole thing. And then like he couldn't muster up enough strength to get back into it. So that's when Spectre Oliver came and untapped his potential and allowed all of them to be drawn into the speed force and then that's when this episode kind of shifted for me and that's why i said it was an oliver episode because when they were all trapped in the speed force that is when we saw all of these different versions of oliver and a whole bunch of other stuff going on and um 
we got to see some of the most wonderful scenes from past seasons. And they were nice to have all those scenes and see Oliver in those moments with him and Ray. Um, like when they were first getting introduced to each other. Um, we got to see Laura, Laurel and Diggle um, after Sarah had died. So there was a lot of flashback stuff that we got to see. We got to see Tyler Hartsland and basically Tulick or Elizabeth Tulick. Um, as super as Superman and uh, Lois Lane again, and Oliver saving them with the 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 arrow. I mean the arrow, the arrow of destiny or whatever. And seeing Barry realize that Oliver had to make another sacrifice himself, and then Oliver went into a long explanation. Well, not a long explanation, but a nice explanation to Barry it was like, dying is the easy part because the dead are at peace. The living are the ones that's you know. They have to live on and make these sacrifices. Excuse me. So it was very, very nice to see that and and see this Specter Oliver have like a different outlook and opinion because you know he's tapped into all of the multiverses and he saw everything, he relived everything, and he knows what he has to do. So seeing this version of Oliver was absolutely fantastic. And it wasn't about power, it wasn't about uh, taking out the bad guys. It was about him making that sacrifice again. And every time Oliver makes that sacrifice, it, it, it breaks your heart, man. Because, you know, this all started with him from Arrow. And to see him make that sacrifice and end at the end of this episode, it was so, so heartbreaking, man. But it was so nice and it was done so well. Now, one thing that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this whole episode that really just upset me so bad, man. Okay. When the fight scene started happening and they're at the dawn of time and they're fighting the anti-monitor and everything and everybody's putting in the moves and stuff and then, you know, Lex has powers now so he's doing his own thing and everybody else is fighting. Then we have Ryan Choi up there punching the little the little spectacles. Like, what are you doing? I mean, <laughs> you're a paragon, but like, what are, what is this? You're not doing anything. And I guess the same could be said for... Um, John Jones or and um, Batwoman and White Canary, but at the same time, these people are. John Jones is the Martian Manhunter. Batwoman, you know, she's Batwoman and White Canary. It she's the time traveler that's with like being brought back to life. So they all have like what something they can bring to the table. But Ryan Choi is just a normal human being, and he. <laughs> so this is what it feels like to be a hero, you guys. So like, yeah, that's the only nitpick about this episode that I had, and I couldn't really just fathom. And I was like, no, 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 no. But overall, I really enjoyed this episode, and I can't wait to dive into the next episode, which is what I'm going to do now. So this is your boy, the Incredible. Stay tuned for that as well. Peace out, man.